So uh, in addition to uh, being able to figure out how old things are, nuclear reactions have other uses, very useful to society. And one of them is this reaction right here. Uh, this is the chain reaction, uh, nuclear fission reaction, uh, that uranium-235 can do. So that's the isotope. Uh, that is used for nuclear energy. So nuclear power plants use uh, uranium-235 uh, to produce energy. And the reason why they do use this specific isotope, and it has to be this specific isotope, is that it can undergo a chain reaction, meaning that you, once you start this reaction, it will uh, continually basically feed itself and continue it going. All right, this starts off with a neutron. So if you bombard a uranium-235 isotope uh, with a neutron, so slam a neutron into it, it will undergo this nuclear fission reaction. It breaks down to barium-140 and krypton-93 and produces three neutrons. And you could check the atomic numbers and mass numbers, make sure this is balanced, and this is uh, the nuclear fission reaction uh, for this process. Now what happens is these three neutrons go on and can run into other uranium-235 atoms that are in that sample. And guess what happens? Wait for it, get excited, boom, special effects. Those three neutrons run into other uranium-235 isotopes and produce the same reaction. Okay? I didn't want to put it on the PowerPoint side because then you wouldn't be impressed by my special effects. It's from your book, all right? So they run into uranium-235 uh, atoms. And guess what? They, they cause this nuclear fission reaction to occur. They produce three more neutrons, so they can go on. So it's a chain reaction. So once you put in a little bit of energy to kickstart this process, then it keeps itself going. So that's the chain reaction uh, portion of it. Not all radioactive isotopes can do this. Uranium-235 is one of them that can. I know there are others, but uranium-238 can't, okay? Uh, it cannot undergo a nuclear fission chain reaction. And so whenever you hear about uh, countries, uh, unfortunately, developing nuclear weapons, okay, you often hear about some processes they use to, they use centrifuges to enrich uranium. Have you ever heard that term, enriched uranium, in the news? Okay, it's, it's out there, it's in the news. <laughs> Pick up the paper, morning paper, you don't know? Okay. Uh, so if you ever hear that term, enriched uranium, what happens is, okay, if you want to do this for a, a, you know, a weapon or hopefully just for energy uh, sources, when you dig up uranium, okay, it's got all the isotopes that are naturally occurring, and it's primarily uranium-238. That's its most abundant isotope. That is the isotope. You don't want that isotope. So what you do is you go through processes to remove uranium-238 and so that you have more uranium-235 in your sample so that this happens, okay? And so, so if you have a sample that has a higher uh, uranium-235 percent, then it would naturally occur you have an enriched uranium sample. All right, so that happens, okay? And it produces a lot of energy. And how do we get that energy to translate into electricity to use, okay? There's a couple nuclear power plants in South Florida. This is how they do it. So they have their fuel rods. So you have uranium, uh, usually doped in some type of really, um, uh, really uh, ceramic material that has uh, very good thermal properties that can withstand the heat. Um, they have a series of control rods or uh, reactor rods, fuel rods, um, and control rods to block those neutrons. So the more you block the fuel rods from each other, the more you block the neutrons and you would slow down the reaction. Or if you raise them up, more neutrons would go from fuel rod to fuel rod and that would speed up the reaction so you produce more energy. And essentially, they, they do uh, the same process like if a coal burning power plant would do. Uh, they use that energy to heat up water. And then the water turns into steam, steam's gas, and so it takes up a lot more room, takes a lot more volume, and if you use that increased volume to produce pressure to turn a turbine, and the turbine produces the electricity. All a turbine is is a piece of uh, a metal inside of a magnet, usually copper, or excuse me, a mag magnet inside of a coil of a metal, like copper, and the magnet turns, 
And that influences the electrons in the copper and pushes them along and there you get your electrical current.